That is right, it is time for the Monday Menace. And this Monday, our uh, menacing creature is none other than Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson, who is currently in a pretty tight race for his seat. This is again, one of the seats the Democrats are hoping to flip uh, with Democrat Mandela Barnes. We'll get into some of that very interesting polling a little bit later. But why is he the Monday Menace? Well, because he was speaking to local Wisconsin news and effectively admitted the yeah, he had something to do with the January 6th alternate slate of electors, but like not that much, like a little bit, like whatever, like it's not even relevant. So he was asked whether or not he would testify to the January 6th committee, and he said this quote, What would they ask me to testify about? Johnson said when asked if he would testify before the committee, I had nothing to do with the alternate slate. I had no idea anybody was going to ask me to deliver those. My involvement in that attempt to deliver. Span the course of a couple seconds. You know, when a crime is done like quickly, they call it a quick crime. And therefore, it's like not a crime. Do you, know, do you ever hear that defense? It's gotten many, many people off. I'm surprised you are not versed in that. So he said it was just a, just a little bit, just a few, a few seconds. Um, he did have, and we can go to these shots uh, now, he did have, remember, when he's been asked about his role, uh, in the alternate slate of electors, what he was doing. This is how he usually responds. Here he is pretending to be on the phone. How much did you know about what your chief of staff was doing with the alternate slates of electors? No, you're not. I can see your phone. I can see your screen. What your chief of staff was doing? I see the screensaver, your, your, your kids are there. I don't know where you guys are, you're in Machu Picchu. It looks like a Tinder profile. Uh, so that was him, uh, this was in June, pretending not to hear the reporters, pretending to be on the phone. Then later he's like, all right, the jig is up, I'm gonna respond. And here's what he ultimately said. This was a staff to staff exchange and I was you know, basically unaware of it and the chief staff contacted the vice president's staff, said, do you want this? They said no, and, and we didn't deliver it, and that's the end of the story. But why was he even asking for that? Because somebody delivered this to our office and asked to deliver that to the vice president. Did you support the, his efforts to try to get those slates to the vice president? No, I, I, I had no knowledge of this. Who Somebody just delivered something to my office, and so I just passed the message. I am merely the messenger. Again, let's revisit what that message was supposed to be. And remember that according to the Times, the Trump plan began with that effort to persuade Republican officials in targeted states, Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Nevada, New Mexico, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin to help draft or at least put their names on documents that declared Mr. Trump to be the victor. Once the false pro Trump slate of electors had been created, Mr. Trump and his allies turned to the second part of the plan, strong arming Vice President Mike Pence into considering them during the joint session of Congress on January 6th. The point was to persuade Mr. Pence to say that the election was somehow flawed or in doubt or to delay to the certification of the electors count. And again, the third part of the plan was just storming the Capitol, we saw how that went down. Dan, before I could get to you, let's remember what the January 6th committee um, revealed, which was text messages from the chief of staff in Ron Johnson's office and someone working for uh, Mike Pence. <laughs> so this is between Sean Riley and Chris Hodgson. We don't have it here, but this begins with sup from Chris Hodgson, which is my favorite ever. Sean says, Johnson needs to hand something to V POTUS, please advise. Chris Hodgson, what is it? This is by the way, noon, January 6th. Sean Riley, alternate slate of electors for Michigan and Wisconsin because archivist didn't receive them. Oh, That's funny, Chris Hodgson, do not give that to him. No, mm, yeah, nah, bye block, Like, and that was it, and so here you have, Direct staff member with Ron Johnson, someone working with Mike Pence. These are in the waning 
our mob literally amassing at the door. Um, here was the last alternative, I guess, and it didn't work, so you sick the mob. Dan, Ron Johnson, we're gonna get into the polls, but does what do you think about this? You think he's gonna be asked to testify? I mean, he should be compelled to testify. Those text messages are pretty damning. Um, he said his part in January 6th only took a few seconds or lasted a few seconds. He was originally saying that he had nothing to do with January 6th. So apparently his uh, statement that he had nothing to do with January 6th last even less than his supposed influence or part in that uh, event. But uh, the, the back and forth he's constantly trying to make, it's very clear that he's trying to hide the possible accountability from here. The Republicans are keep playing this game where January 6th is at the same time not a big deal, but also something they don't wanna touch and be related towards because they fear, fear it might be toxic for them. Uh, will it be ultimately toxic for them? I don't know, because I think there's a large part of their base that does believe believe that, that Trump, even if he didn't win, should have been declared the victor at all costs. I still think that Ron Johnson should be compelled to testify because there's clearly something he's hiding and he needs to be on the record. Absolutely. And like, you know, as as good as reporters I think are doing, hounding him, trying to make sure that he they know he knows that they know he's on a fake phone call and such, or you know, a local news outlet obviously covering his race and just asking him, hey, this is kind of the biggest thing in national news right now. What was your involvement with that? And he's like, ah, it's a nothing burger. Um, at some point he's gonna have to answer for this. And at some point you gotta be honest, like, so what is it? Either you did know about it and you did help and there was a plan or you're an idiot. And these folks are doing this under your nose, using your office to do it, to send these alternate slate of electors. Folks who've been investigated now by the January 6th committee and even some by the FBI. Like we're, we're talking serious crimes here um, and he's like, well, either like I, I, I'm like, what? No, okay, but a little bit I did, but not really, but kind of. And like that answer doesn't fly when you're sitting in front of Congress. Um, by the way, he is part of Congress. He is a senator, but maybe not for long. So according to a Fox News, yes, right, a Fox News poll published recently, Mandela Barnes is edging Johnson in the Wisconsin Senate race uh, with 50%. If the election were today, choosing Mandela Barnes over Ron Johnson, huge, 40 to 4, Johnson's 46%. It seems like Barnes has obviously less name recognition. There's less um, overall excitement, but of course we know, knowing that your current senator is a lying idiot, effectively will move you to vote for the other person, uh, whether or not you know Mandela Barnes is like a household name or not. But the other part of this obviously is Roe versus Wade and protecting abortion rights in Wisconsin. Majority of Wisconsinites, 55% disapprove of the US Supreme Court's overturning of Roe v. Wade. And those voters largely back Barnes by 67 points. Those approving of the Dobbs decision, 37% widely favor Johnson by 83 points. So. There you have it, one of those issues in addition to, we're gonna get into some polling later on, what else is driving people to the polls? I am, I don't love to get ex too excited about polls because after 2016, I literally believe no one and I've said this before, Dan. But like, it says a lot that, you know, Mandela Barnes is effectively now in, a, in multiple polls and this is a Fox News poll, is beating Ron Johnson. Yeah, I'll also uh, sprinkle a little bit of cynicism in there with you, Francesca. And note <laughs> that that poll has a 3% margin of error and he's leading by four points. That's a tie and it's August, so Don't look a lot too can closely, change. Dan. But <laughs> the, I mean, if, if a lot changes, I mean, what if he comes, is if he's called to testify, that only helps Barnes. I think so too, but I also like I reminisce to a lot of these cases where you have high profile Republicans that Democrats really want to unseat. And so there's a lot of money that gets poured into those races, even though those candidates may or may not be the strongest ones. I think at the end of the day, look, Ron Johnson said, hey, listen, I received something. So therefore I was just gonna be the messenger and pass it along to the vice president. Mm -hmm. If his constituents don't actually believe that that's how Ron Johnson works, not just in a, oh, I got something from, I was just handed something, I'm not gonna vet it at all. Is Ron Johnson doing that with his constituents? Is he doing that with the people who vote him in the office? Is he just taking the things that they're saying and, oh, I don't know, I just saw this. I'm gonna pass it along to the people I'm like running with or empower with. 
Right. I don't know if that's the case here. And so that's ultimately what's gonna come down to. Do the people of Wisconsin feel that Ron Johnson is best representing their interests? And I, I would be happy with <laughs> any Senate Demo- uh, flip, honestly, given this year and how it's supposed to go. So my fingers are crossed, but I'm not gonna hold my breath for this. Absolutely, and and I mean, it just shows how far we've slid to the right in this country when basic bodily autonomy rights and democracy are the two biggest things driving people to the polls. We didn't think it would get this dark. I mean, maybe we did, but here we are, and suddenly it's like, well, do you or don't you believe in you know the election process? And do you or don't you believe that you know people shouldn't bleed out? from miscarriages and not be able to say when they want to be parents. I mean, it's basic stuff. It's just it's basic, do we like fascism or not? Anyway, yeah, let's, yeah. I was gonna say one more thing, maybe or maybe not their Senator Ron Johnson may or may not have done as what George Blues called light treason <laughs> in Arrested Development. You know, that might be something they want their Senator to be a part of or not a part of. I don't know, we'll let the people in Wisconsin decide. I hope they decide right. Amen. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.